Welcome to Eat, Sleep, Wine, Repeat, a podcast for all you wine lovers who, if you're like me, just cannot get enough of the good stuff. I'm Yanina Doyle, your host, brand ambassador, wine educator, and sommelier. So stick with me as we dive deeper into this ever-evolving, wonderful world of wine. And wherever you are listening to this, cheers to you. Hello, and welcome back to part two two with interpreting wine podcast host Lawrence Francis. So as you already know from the title of this specific episode we are talking sherry. Yes sherry from the south of Spain in Andalusia. So by the end of this episode you're going to know about the region in more detail, the main grape variety and all of the dry styles of sherry. So as they would say in Spain, vamos a la conversación con Lawrence. Let's go to the conversation now. We are rocking and rolling and officially rocking and rolling with sherry. Why sherry? You picked the subject today. You said you wanted sherry. Uh, (laughs) I did. I did. Um, well, this is... <laughs> Explain uh, yourself. <laughs> Why are we drinking sherry today? <laughs> well, I've got to say, this is part two mm-hmm. of a two-part conversation yes. that, that, we're, that we're releasing. Um, and I started my podcast and, and in Spain. Yeah. And, and I just, beyond that, I just have an absolute love of, of all things Spanish. I speak the language. I've been to just about every corner of Spain. Mm. Um, and and so, you know, have a connection with the food and the and the wine yeah. in, in, in pretty much every region. Yeah. Um, and I, I chose Sherry because um, it, it's somewhere actually that was, I guess, quite hard for me to really get my head around. Um, more in terms of the wine style. It's um, not an easy subject say. for the average. Well, okay, of course, Harvey's Bristol Cream. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that, Is that what you've got there? No. No, I do not. I have the same <laughs> wines as you. I do not have any. But that, you know, sweet sherry has confused so many mm. consumers because they have no idea that so much of the good stuff is completely dry and that there are so many different dry styles out there. There's so many styles of sherry full stop. Yeah, what well, 100%. And um I mean the other thing is as well is that, you know, I was lucky enough to um you know, on my on my podcast journey I was actually lucky enough to be uh, taken over to Jerez back in 2019 um, mm. and and got to interview like several producers over there and actually you know released a sort of a, a mega series uh, on all things uh, sherry um, I just got like totally immersed and totally drawn back into um, the Andalusian way of life uh, I, w- I would say that they're, they're just happier within sp- sunshine <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing like it you know I, I've, I've i've said this time and time again I, I don't think there's anywhere in the world that i'd rather retire mm. you know when i'm ready to hang up my microphone mm. <laughs> um, that's, <laughs> that's 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 where you'll find me because i just think that the warmth the warmth of the people um it's just it's just absolutely beautiful and and i think you know it's got so, so much beyond i guess the what you might have seen, uh, the beaches and Malaga and um, Marbella, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, these places that are, that are, I'm sure, you know, very cool. But there's there's like levels and there's, there's lots of depth, I would say. Um, and I think one of the things that people pretty much uniformly from Andalusia are, are like rightly proud of, I think, is the is the sherry uh, phenomenon, really, you know, the sherry industry, if you like, and, and just this this wine style that, that you know, is still so popular really still still uh, still kind of you know consumed so much around the world well there's definitely many sherry aficionados right you know once you become a sherry fan it's like you're a fan for life right now can we pour the first wine because i feel like you know we don't want to throw this right at the end let's i'm gonna pour yeah a manzanilla now let's do it. <laughs> and i know you're like waiting for permission aren't you like <laughs> when is she gonna when is she gonna say it's go 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 right with half the bottle here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you only got half a bottle left have you been drinking already <laughs> I, I may, I may have done. That's, that's the beauty of a podcast as well. I already I have two. I have two. In fact, okay. So to let chin, chin. exactly cheers. I was drinking this last night. So we have both of us yeah. have the same wines. We have a beautiful Manzanilla, um, and it's from Bodega 
Hidalgo la Gitana, so a very famous. Muy bien. Obviamente <laughs> puedo hablar un poquito español, but you know, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this winery in a mm. second. But this Manzanilla is Manzanilla and Fino. We'll try and get a little bit into the styles. Manzanilla mm. and Fino mm. are the two styles that are biologically aged and that means that they're a little bit saltier they are we'll talk about the differences in a second i'm sure but they're saltier and obviously it's this floor this yeast that gives you this bready flavor but they're just amazing with tapas and the other thing that they're amazing with mm. is white fish so last night we i say we the partner i didn't i just sat and watched and then ate i ate mm. his fish there were some white fish it was just white cod nice and simple a little bit of herbed mm. potatoes and some just boring broccoli sorry nothing nothing elaborate but because of the cod I thought you know what let's crack open this manzanilla and it really really works and it, it's something that you know we always talk about oh a lovely Sauvignon Blanc will be perfect oh get a um an Albarino if we're going to talk a Spanish wine whatever there's lots of standard still white wines you could pick but sherry as a subject I mean it's perfect with white fish right yeah, I, I, I mean, you, I think, brought up the one of the things that I think I'd probably missed, really, where, you know, in, in my sort of first pass okay. um, around sherry, which which is really that, you know, essentially it, it is a food wine. Mm. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll share something in a minute, which is, you know, how, how people in Spain often manage to sort of have it without food. Um, but, you know, essentially, you know, these are, I would say, at their best when you when you kind of have them and you think you're at least being a little bit mindful about what might kind of go well with it so, mm -hmm. so absolutely i mean i think the the the, the lighter styles of of sherry the, the fino and the manzanilla um they are for me and you know what i've what i've sort of come across you know that kind of work really well with, with, with kind of quite salty um food mm. so it's so often yeah the kind of olives and the and the the, the lighter foods as you say the the, the, the fish as well um, even like salted nuts as well. Oh, yum! Um, they they can often bring out some of the some of the complexity that's that's to be found there. Um, and I think it's just it's just fascinating to me that you know how really how long these these wines have have been aged for. I, my understanding is this is this has been aged for five years. Um, and to you know to to find a, a wine that's like readily available in a supermarket that's been aged for five years and and kind of has this complexity. Of, of the wine that we're having now um it's it, in my experience it's you know maybe going to the wrong supermarket so, <laughs> uh, but but it's not that easy no. so, you know it's really not that easy to find something that uh you know really kind of you know can hold its hold its own at the dinner table and and is interesting and as you say you know you might might kind of had your fill of of, of sauvignon blanc and you want to try something a little bit different or maybe you're having tapas or you know you're you're, you're having something um you know a little bit more mediterranean um this is a this is a great, I think, and quite versatile uh, food wine. Well, you said about how good value it is. Just to point out, we're looking around the ten mm. pound mark. This is literally ten pounds for a seventy five cl bottle, so a standard bottle of wine size. Ten pounds. That's it. After, as you just pointed out, five years of aging. Anyone who wants to get this, apart from the fact this is a really <laughs> popular wine. It's you can find it in Waitrose. You can find it even uh, mm. the smaller size. I think in Majestic, the Whiskey Exchange. It's not hard to find. In fact, this one. Let's talk about Bodega Hidalgo Legitana. This Manzanilla is their flagship wine. So this is why it's also mm. so easy to find. I think it accounts for something like seventy percent mm. of their production. So guys, it's not going to run out. So. That <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good news but i mean these guys are amazing they've been around and i'm i'm literally reading this now because i put down some i mean these they've been since 1792 they're one of yeah. the oldest wineries in the sherry area in fact they're the third oldest but the oldest family owned still so they're still family owned in their sixth generation and what i actually heard the winemaker saying on one of those mm. video audios that you sent me that uh, by the way is on a davies mm. website if anyone wants to hear a little bit more about directly from the winemaker there's some lovely audios of him talking he said that this winery is the ninth oldest mm. like not just winery company family yeah. company in Spain, yep. I mean that's yep. that's pretty cool. That takes you back a little bit, right? This is it, yeah. The, the, uh, there's, I mean, it, you know, 
I again, I absolutely love this uh, this region. Um, and I was I said earlier I was going to sort of share how how people in Spain will will have this without food. Okay. Um, and and that kind of takes us back to you know one of my most favorite trips to to Andalusia, which was to uh, Sevilla, mm -hmm. and um, they they have the this massive party two weeks after Easter mm -hmm. uh, called, called the Feria de Abril, mm -hmm. the, the April Fair, and they essentially construct a, a temporary city. Kind of on the outskirts of uh, of, of of Seville. Oh, that's cool. Um, and it is like stepping back in time. Mm -hmm. you know, you've got these co kind of cobblestone streets. They'll, they've got horses, kind of you know, horses and carriages going up and down the streets uh, during the daytime. Yeah. And dancing everywhere. Ugh. You know, the 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 dance, the costumes. Uh, the dance is the Sevillana, mm -hmm. which is you know the the kind of most traditional thing to dance there. Yeah. And you know, the women are wearing the um the the they call it the like the the gypsy dress basically um and this it just goes on for nine days i think uh, now well the spanish know how to party i think i think like literally every other week there is <laughs> a feria a day off a, their and version it's fueled of by it runs on rebujito what's rebujito is, so rebujito is the simplest sherry cocktail there is ah. and still you know, still, still good because, as you say, you're you, you're making it with a wine that's been aged. But essentially, it's just three ingredients, and they just mix it together in these jugs. Uh -huh. They'll take probably probably like a half bottle or a, or a, or a half liter uh -huh. bottle, stick it stick it into the jug. Also, put in like half a liter of, of Sprite or you know some some kind of um, something to sweeten it. Lemonade, some, some something like that. Yeah, exactly. And then and then kind of top up with ice. Okay. And then and then that's it. And then that that is basically. You know, because because these 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 sherries, even the finos, you know, they do sort of end up at around fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's quite strong to be drinking all day if you're you know going to the mm -hmm. fair and spending all day there dancing mm -hmm. and uh, may, you know maybe not eating so much. So that probably brings it down to a you know a, bit, a little bit more of a manageable level with the ice and the and the sprite. But you still get that sort of um, you know you get that sort of little, little boost and that little bit of sugar and that little bit of sherry in you, um, and it's basically what what the people run on for for, for, for that entire days. week and because it goes on until you know 5 a.m mm -hmm. and then people people go back home have a shower and they have to go to work yes. unfortunately some of them as well so they'll go in there but everyone's in the same boat so i love that um, yeah, every, everyone sort of yeah <laughs> survives it somehow <laughs> but they're well practiced it's just unbelievable. Well, I didn't have it with lemonade but interesting after i had a little yeah. try of the manzanilla yesterday i also put some tonic tonic water in there okay, after yeah, yeah. literally speaking with top sommelier Bert Blaze on a podcast a few weeks ago he was saying when he was down in Jerez they were drinking it like that and it was just amazing and I thought and, it, and he was like it's so much better than a gin and tonic it's I wouldn't say it's better than a gin and tonic from my perspective because it depends on your your palate definitely I do think sherries are a slightly more acquired taste but i thought it was really mm. interesting it was super super fresh and instead of the botanicals botanicals that was rather posh sound instead of the botanicals the botanicals <laughs> instead of the botanicals How darling are you spelling that dear <laughs> <laughs> instead of the botanicals there's that, that D -O -W. <laughs> really the sour tangy yeah. lemon peely it's just it's really interesting it's got a different vibe but still got some you know lovely lovely freshness to it with that with that tonic so I gave that a go as well, so I've had a I've had a bit of fun with this wine. But what do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, again, it, it's super bone dry. I think that's that's oh, the thing it? that I would say I would say yeah. first off, um, yeah. because I think it, I think still um, Sherry's maybe been a victim of its own success when it brought out and, and kind of really expanded production into into sweeter styles. Yeah. And, it, and it's absolutely you know almost crystal clear. Um, that's I think one of those interesting things about it because that's that's what um, essentially the 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 flaw that 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 biological aging that you're that you're talking about there mm -hmm. it, it basically feeds on the alcohol yeah and that's that's what kind of means that it that it kind of comes across. I would also say that you know it it doesn't for me you know that, that there's really not much um, nothing like too kind of fruity here coming through for no. me. Uh, I, I think that's probably the. I think a couple of things. I mean, I think one the the Palomino Fino 
grape, which 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 these uh, this wine uh, comes from, yeah. I think is is broadly accepted to be you know relatively neutral um, grape style uh, in those conditions down there, and then also uh, the brandy that that that's added um, to the, to this wine is also quite neutral as well. So I I always think that this this takes on the characteristics from from that that floor so so more like kind mm. of yeasty mm. um characteristic and i'm i'm i guess one of those old romantics that you know if, if this wine is being produced close to the sea and, <laughs> and in this sort of such a you know humid and an almost kind of subtropical uh place as, as andalusia is then it will it will kind of you know soak in somehow some of that salinity and, yeah. and some of that kind of sea breeze almost and you know I, I to me it just it just takes me back there because i had i had such a a wonderful experience uh visiting all of those yeah. different bodegas and it just it just for me it's it's just a real time capsule of that experience and 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 of that time there so it just it just transports me back there to andalusia well i think if anybody wants a really good example of a manzanilla i mean this one is it i get you know kind of like that really sharp green apple like a baking apple um and a bit of lime but what's playing center stage is a bit of that saltiness that breadiness like maybe some salted almonds but there's something really interesting that i was trying to get my head around mm. and it's kind of herbaceous but i was like what kind of herb is it because i've been trying to think and describe it it almost takes me to the agave mm. plant that's in tequila I don't know whether you can okay. get that, but this it's this herbaceous notes, and that might be very unique to me. But I really love the freshness and that herby saltiness that I'm getting from it. And then on the palate, I mean, it's just tangy and salty and some lemon skins and mm, a little bit almond flakes. Mm. This is it. I mean, it, I think it, it is. Uh, you know, I was, I was listening back actually to the to to the first podcast of the, of the of the series i recorded down there yeah. with, with the with the then head of the consejo mm -hmm. um you know the, the people who look after uh sherry and uh you know kind of uh, authorize everything that carries the sherry label and and uh you know i was very i was very impressed because obviously there's there's so much talk of the of the history you know i, yeah. I would say that that's one thing that you can kind of you know be guaranteed really you know you get get speaking to anybody that's that's passionate about sherry or, or that produces sherry and i think very quickly they will they will tell you about how it's made and where um the conditions that it's made in and where it's made and the cities it's made that you know that they, they just love talking about it um but i think that the thing that kind of really impressed me uh when i was when i was speaking to uh, senor beltran domek was he was also very keen to to talk about it out there in the in the world as well and, and bring in things like you know the kind of mixologist interpretation mm -hmm. so almost like the next level up from you know your 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 rebujito and <laughs> your um and your and your your sherry and tonic but really going to the next level then and it's like you know this has an ingredient in a in a sort of a a seven eight nine ten ingredient you know signature cocktail mm. it's just it's just bringing something it's like that extra uh tool in in the box for those mixologists and i i know that that sherry is as as a region and you know as a as a sort of a a wine uh they've had a lot of success with that as a, as a selling point really that that this this will bring something that really no other wine uh, and I guess kind of no other spirit really can, can bring to a, a cocktail. I mean, it's certainly gaining in popularity, isn't it? I'm certainly in London. I can't, I imagine in cities around the world, there's, there's always these sherry bars now that people can go and, and experience mm. though. In fact, I should probably have looked up. I'm really bad. I'm not prepared. I should have looked up some sherry bars to name, but I'm sure everyone has the internet. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Google. Use Google. Go and go and <laughs> guys. Don't just depend on me. Go and figure it out yeah. yourselves. I can't do everything here. Oh dearie me! But have you been to San Luca de Barameda? So we should probably point out there is the mm. Sherry Triangle. Do they call it the Sherry Triangle? The Sherry yes. Triangle. That was yeah. It is. How I've always heard it. So the Sherry Triangle for everybody is San Luca de Barameda, which is where Manzanilla comes from. So this is, they, they have their own DO. That is where Manzanilla has to age. So it could come from other areas, but it must age in San Luca de Barameda. 
It's really exciting because it's actually very different, the microclimate. So mm. maybe we'll touch on that in a second. Then you have the famous mm. Jerez de la Frontera, and that's actually where Jerez, Sherry, that's the kind of the translation. That's mm. where the, the that's where it was started from. And then you have El Puerto mm. de Santa Maria. So these are, if you actually look at them on the map, they, they form a triangle. So all the vineyards mm -hmm. and everything happens around these three places. Now, you mentioned to me that mm. you went to Jerez because obviously nobody's going to go down <laughs> to Sherryland and not go to Jerez. Did you yeah. go across to San Luca de Barameda? Yeah, we, we did. My, uh, as, as you can probably, uh, <laughs> probably imagine, it was, it was a very... Um, intense <laughs> four nights there so you know some of the details are maybe uh, a little bit fuzzy is it because some of the, the olorosos <laughs> and the others are a little bit 17 18 percent is that it part was, of it it was just you know i wanted to make the most of my time mm -hmm. there and you know I, I i suffer for my art so someone has to I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, this is it i was i was traveling i had I produced nine interviews when I was down there. Oh, in there, four so days okay to... that's that is hard so it was pretty it was pretty full mm -hmm. on um and and I believe the the very first night actually so the so the the, the first evening um, we actually went to San Luca de Barameda mm -hmm. and and to uh, the bodega of Osborne mm -hmm. so in, in the series itself that's actually the second episode yeah. so um, yeah actually you know recorded the the tour that they that that, that they gave us. Um, and so, yeah, obviously able to 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 share that. So we we saw that by night, and we pretty much saw that from within the the kind of walls of the of, of the bodega. Yeah. Um, but you know, as you can sure as you can imagine, you know, magical welcome and and that you know really warm climate. I'd actually I'd actually flown directly to Jerez from uh, Austria. Oh, wow. uh, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd been over in Austria for, for I think four nights as well. Um, and it, you know, it was not exactly culture shock, but, but obviously <laughs> still different. within, still within Europe, but yeah, you, you, you're going from like, you know, going down the Danube and, you know, going, going to, to what, you know, what, what are quite, quite cause sort of cool, uh, regions and quite foresty regions to then Hareth, whether, whether it was, you know, the sunshine hits you and that was, that was May, you know, yeah. and, I've never been there in 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 June and July. No, you don't want to. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but interestingly, you know, to 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 kind of give the I guess the the the, the key thing about Manzanilla is, is that layer of floor F L O R, which obviously you know look look up on on YouTube or on Google yeah. um, to to see how that looks. That that is the region there for that microclimate that you've just mentioned. Yeah. That's the region where that that floor doesn't kind of recede it doesn't or it doesn't away. get too thin. Mm -hmm. No, because because even in the winters there, it's warm enough to sustain the floor. The floor floors like me, it likes a <laughs> likes warm environment and lots of alcohol. You and floor should be best friends. But the, San Luca de Barremela is amazing, isn't it? Because it's got the the river running by it. Um, I don't know what what's it called the Qualca, the Guadalquivir. Qual yeah. I know I'm not even pronouncing it correctly. Do you want to try it one more time for me? The Gadel Kivir. Yeah, okay, that'll do. So it's got that river, and then it's got the marshlands all around it, you know. And it so this floor that obviously gives all that bready, mm. salty yeastiness, it never disappears, and it's the thickest layer. So whereas it's made in the same way as Fino, they're made in the same way. It's the same grape variety. Obviously, the best examples are all grown on the Albariza soils, which are these just beautiful white chalky soils that retain all the water, the you know deeply. So the vines, even in the middle of summer, they can still get some mm. water they're amazing soils aren't they um so it's all the same but it's simply just the fact that this floor can maintain itself the whole way through summer and winter yeah. that it just is saltier and and actually a bit finer it's just that little bit seems that saltier and a bit more elegant yeah you're you're in you're in you're in good company i think either, either way and uh i think that's that that's the other thing i mean uh, you know it's 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 also I think it's very interesting that that even the you know the producers because there is, there are those different mm. um, different influences across those different cities you know as as you get in any region um, you know I, I think just sort of you know be careful if if, if you kind of lump finos and manzanillas together yeah. because I think people will especially ones who are who are producing it you know they'll be they'll be very quick to point out what the what the differences are even if you know I'll be honest you know sometimes for me I can't always. Uh, tell the difference but it, it maybe need, does need a little bit of context and mm -hmm. uh you know it's it's all 
it's that kind of you know well of history i guess and and information that that sherry has you know there's there's kind of so much to, to discover and so much uh nuance yeah. really about about the about the wine oh, style for which... sure and it's just something that people are, don't don't realize about really and actually I, you know i mentioned the alberta soils i have not been down to jerez mm. or san luca de barameda i've heard that the soils because they're they're white but they're they're not just white they're yeah. they're, they're, they're vibrant they they shine do you remember that when you're walking through the vineyards were these white that, soils yeah. really that intense i mean it was it was yeah it, it was it's really interesting the, the so the i didn't actually explain the bigger context of the of the visit there oh, so, okay. I, so i was in a sense i was i was kind of um piggybacking really on on, on the back of this massive event that they that they host in in, in Jerez every two mm -hmm. years which is called the Copa okay. Jerez and the idea there is I think really to kind of reinforce this idea of of sherry as a food wine uh, they run competitions in essentially big sherry consuming markets and important sherry markets around the world um, at top restaurants ah. um, and they're basically looking for it's almost like the kind of the olympics of of sherry food pairing <laughs> um so so they, they kind of whittle everyone down you have like the the uk heats and the us heats and the the spain heats and the denmark heats and the german heats uh -huh. um around eight or uh, i think countries in all and then they'll kind of battle it battle each other down in the country and then they'll, they'll get their representative team from each country which and the, each team consists of a sommelier and a chef so and the idea here is that they've they've as a team that they, they've got to put together uh, a, a three course uh essentially pairing menu a kind of mini pairing okay. menu so they've got a starter they've got a main they've got a dessert and in conjunction between essentially that you know is that triangle uh, again between the sommelier between the chef and between the 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 producers then they kind of bring uh, and put forward what are what are the best um, pairings that they possibly can. Oh, amazing. And the idea is then that that they then present the kind of the the dishes and the wines that won them the regional heats. They then all fly into Jerez together at that same kind of two three night um, period, mm -hmm. and then they actually produce those dishes and and the sommelier presents those dishes, kind of in in under timed conditions. You oh, know, amazing. The, the, the clock is ticking. And they have to present to a you know a very esteemed panel. Um, can people and, can people hmm. watch this live, or can they find the information online and see what dishes were produced? Give them some inspiration. Yeah, there's the, the I think the the, the sherry uh, you know the kind of official sherry wine website is is very comprehensive. Mm. So I think any kind of search for sherry copper C O P A Hereth J E R E Z. Um, I was there in 2019, so 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 that that's that's really the you know the say the experience that I had and and what I saw there. Um, it's it's kind of all there. You have all, you know all of these sort of Michelin star restaurants that are you know putting forward the the sommelier uh, chef team, mm -hmm. and it, it's really competitive. You know, I, I, I must admit, I, I maybe underestimated <laughs> <laughs> before I went there how competitive it really was. You know, people were really. Uh, yeah, giving their all, and I think just you know just really wanted to win. So Love it. it was it was it was a pretty incredible experience. Awesome. Okay, that's amazing. Now now we know why you were really there. Right, I've <laughs> run out of that glass, so I'm going to pour myself the other one. It's Palo Cortado time. Palo Cortado, a wine style that is just confusing to perhaps even the people in Jerez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people who do not know what Palo Cortado is, don't worry, we don't either. No, the it's because <laughs> nobody knows. Um, it is a very rare style. I mean, we're talking like a hundred thousand bottles a year get made. Apparently, like one percent of production. And the mm. definition is it's just really vague, isn't it? It's like it should have the nose of an amontillado, but the body of an oloroso. So I guess I, I guess actually we should probably touch on what they are so we so we said that fino and manzanilla are biologically aged which means that they age with the floor so that's why they taste bready and they typically taste salty mm. then you have oloroso which is oxidatively aged meaning 
There is no floor. So all of these wines are fortified. So after the juice has been fermented and identified, is it going to be, is it quite light and elegant? Right, that's going to be a fino. That gets fortified up to 15%, same for Manzanilla. Or it's like, oh, this is quite richer. This is heavier. They're like, right, that's going to be an Oloroso. So they fortify it up to 17 or 18%. And then of course, with it being higher in alcohol, the floor can't survive. It can survive at 15, but it can't survive at 17 or 18. So for that reason, whilst it's aging, just like the Fino and Manzanilla will do, it will do the same thing in Solera systems, which we can we can touch on, but it will obviously have oxygen affecting the wine. So it gets much bigger and nuttier and more mm. toffee and leather and caramel. It depends on obviously uh, how long it ages for. And so then you have Amontillado in the middle and that starts its life like a Fino. And then it then transfers over to then loses its floor because it's refortified and so then has some oxidative aging. So therefore you have the both styles. You have a bit of saltiness, a bit of breadiness, and then you have a bit of toffee and a bit of caramel. So it's a perfect balance if you're not sure which one, which style you prefer. And then, and then you have Palo Cotado. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> which is, well, they say a lot of the winemakers will say it's by accident and ultimately it's more about the style so it can be made in many different ways um typically it would have st started its life with a bit of flaw but speaking to several winemakers now a lot of them don't they say that actually there's just the free run juice that would have gone into a fino but actually straight away they just allow it to have uh, an oxidative effect and it's just the fact that it's just a very fine uh, light style so anyway that mm. yeah that probably confuses people even more but it's rare it's delicious it's very fine and it's somewhere in between an amatillado and an oloroso okay Whew. very well done actually. is that all right i, I think, need to um... stop i feel like i'm sweating trying to describe that <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have a drink you should have uh, should have, should have saved some of the man i am i'm gonna have a nice sip now <laughs> oh, so we, sorry everybody we are tasting a very delicious palo cortado which is 20 years old so it's a v o s so what, what's that in the uh is it latin word obviously it's very old sherry but ah, okay, it's on the back it's on the back vinum optimum signatum there you go Okay, I didn't know that. I'm learning. So I've just, I just, I just accepted it as very old cherry, and that was like easy enough. No, for me. officially, but, uh, it's that's... Vinum Optimum Signatum. Gosh, Lawrence, come on, everyone knows that Vinum Optimum Signatum. <laughs> uh, they do now. They, oh, they, so this is the Wellington, and um, obviously, with twenty years, it is. It's a little bit older. So, what are you smelling? What are you tasting? This, um, you, you, you'll, you'll notice the way the way that I talk about wines is always it's always through experience. Yeah. Um, and and, and th what this actually takes me back is to a trip that I had to, it was Seville, um, mm -hmm. maybe three, four, five years yeah. ago. And I remember, yeah, I was sort of, you know, earlier on on my wine journey. Um, and I was like, yeah, let, let's be really, you know, swanky. Let's, or, let's order a, <laughs> a, 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 let's order a sherry. Yeah. And, and I, I can't, it may have been in a Monteado or it may have been a Palo Cortado, but, uh, but it, it was basically what this is giving me is is kind of I'm remembering the confusion i had which is that, that i almost smell this and i remember smelling this sort of you know back in the day and because it it almost has that those sort of caramel <sighs> um the sort of yeah very like woody um you know quite quite aromatic characteristics yeah. but i i got i got fooled by that by that caramel and that influence that ah. comes from the woods in, into thinking it was going to be mm -hmm. sweet so i was then not to say disappointed <laughs> but 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 uh, but i was dry. really confused yeah i was like how can how can something that smells like it's so round yeah. and and is actually you know maybe got a sort of a you know a touch of uh sort of you know dry fruit and it's something that is it smells like it's so intensely sweet yeah. and not even just it's like a fresh fruit it's almost it's that kind of dried concentrated yeah. fruit and then you actually taste it and it's it's you know almost completely dry i mean this isn't this has got, I can see, you know, a touch of residual sugar, but it's still, it's still very dry. Oh, completely, yeah. Um, I would say. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's again one of these things. You, you, you sometimes can get, I think, a little bit caught out with, with, with some of these sherries that are, you know, in a sense, sort of, in the, in the middle ground between what maybe is a little bit more familiar in terms of that the Fido Manzanilla. Mm -hmm. You kind of get, you get what you're, 
you get what you're kind of expecting yeah. and maybe these are you know, a little bit more complex and maybe even as i say a little bit contradictory sometimes in terms of how they smell and how they actually taste i mean for me it's you said woody and it is it's this woody even like mushroomy walnut style but lovely dried apricots and then this like this kind of hint of gingerbread it there's a lot going mm. on the aromatics on this are beautiful and actually i should point out that amontillado which is obviously in between you know fino and oloroso and sal often has a lot more of that dried fruit the dried apricots often come with an amontillado and of course that's sticking with the style right this should have a nose of an amontillado but more of a body and more full-bodied like an oloroso so on the palate mm, really umami isn't it so yeah the fact that you say mm. you're expecting something sweet yeah. <laughs> oh god devastating yeah mm. Very umami, but but with all this toffee and caramel still, even though it's completely dry, and then with this kind of re- it's a really tangy finish, like like a salty, zesty lemon um, and some um, yeah almond skins. And, and actually, uh, interesting listening to you describe that. There, I think it's it's almost then like you don't really carry through for me. You don't carry through the fruit that you can smell mm. that that doesn't then really show up on the on on the palate it's almost then that's maybe why yeah. um mm-hmm. i i got confused you know as i say i i smelt that fruit i smelt how intense it was i expected it to taste like but that but it doesn't come through I mean, absolutely no. didn't no. Yeah, but it's very it's got that that smoothness though roundness and body on the palate i mean it's it is a very beautiful wine i personally my personal preference mm. is for uh, palo cortados and olorosos i think I, I really like the the nuttiness and the depth that you get with these heavier sherries and then of course something like iberico jamon it's literally an ideal pairing like you can't well i was gonna say you can't get better than that but you probably could but i mean it's 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 one of the best <laughs> pairings you can go but i mean it's it's great you can pair it with game and and red meats and obviously mushroom dishes mushroom pate these kind of things it mm. all be mm. would be fantastic wouldn't they but i mean this is this is a lot more expensive for obvious reasons this is a 20 year aged wine you can get it mm. from i'm looking at the list now it generally around 26 27 pounds from davies from christopher piper wines from fair and wine so again because these guys are quite legendary in sherry they are in enough places people want to stock their wines so i'm sure all my other listeners that are out of the uk you will definitely be able to find wines from bodega hidalgo de gitana so I would I would also just add that um I I have put together a a, a special link Ooh. to d- directly to the producer tasting note for this wine. So if anybody is listening and w- wants to hear this is a sort of a 2 3 minute clip from uh, from the from the producer themselves just go to interpretingwine.com/napoleon and that will take you directly to a to a a, a description which I was yeah, I was, I was very happy that I I, I had uh, I had sort of up my sleeve because <laughs> I was able to, to 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 play this back today. Um, and and listening to 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 them speaking, that they they were actually talking about you know when you would enjoy this mm. wine and um all of the things that you that you just said there in terms of food pairing came out. But then even interestingly for me beyond that, it was actually talking about you know this is one that maybe you could even just enjoy by itself kind of potentially taking the place of where you know cognac or, or yeah, a whiskey c- might because sit because it's a bit smoother isn't it so mm-hmm. yeah and even though you know i'm just holding this up now and it's just got this this lovely you know deep rich color it's it's almost like quite viscous it's and mm. it, you know if you put this in a in a sherry glass uh, in a whiskey glass sorry i think you could you could mistake it for 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 a whiskey. You know, it, it it really does have that look of a a sort of a spirit, slightly higher um, alcohol because it, it's um, because of the, the the production style and the kind of uh, additional fortification. Yeah. So it comes out at seventeen and a half percent. But I think it it kind of would do as as uh, you know as the as the producer kind of recommends. You know, it would it would sort of do a lot of that kind of that job, uh, that kind of digestive and end of the 
end of the meal job really that you know cognac and and, and and great whiskeys also do so well i see that i fully do i mean these guys anyway i realize we they're very they're traditional in the way they make wines they make everything and they've organically mm. farmed as well for anybody i mean not that it's that complicated down in <laughs> the beautiful sunny <laughs> area of andalusia but it is all organically farmed and they have these pagos like pagos are these vineyard sites that produced amazing wines and they have these two top pagos one one in San Luca, in San Luca de Barameda, called Miraflores, and then one that's kind of near Jerez, but a bit closer to the sea, called Balbaina. And that's where their fruit is coming from. So, of course, if anyone wants to go and look up these pagos, they have them in their portfolio, which I think, again, helps with the quality. But they certainly, they've got botas that are like nearly 200 years old or around that as well about 10,000 of them, you know, but that's what they have because they have so much history. You know, I certainly know the first one we were drinking. They've Mm. got a family Solera that dates back to the early 19th century, which apparently is kind of when Manzanilla kind of started, you know, that style. So, you know, they, they go all the way back. So you drink a little bit of history as well as just delicious sherry all at the same time, you know. Yeah, one one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And uh, I just realised I, I did I didn't actually answer your question earlier. You were, what was that? <laughs> you were asking about 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 the soil and kind of how that looks. Oh, how and, funny! And actually, on the on the trip to Sherry, one of the one of the places we we visited, mm. um, it, it it I'm sure it would have been one of those Mil, Mil, Balbaino or Miraflores, but but actually um, by invitation of Williams and Humbert, mm-hmm. uh, they they have a, a sort of a. I guess it's like a a, a, a a small, yeah, entertaining space, really, yeah. uh, kind of out in the middle of the vineyard. So we were actually, um, you know, taking a break from all the all the kind of activity at the main Copper Hareth site. We we were driven out there um, for this incredible lunch, and and it was, you know, May going into June, mm. so you know, temp- temperatures were were pretty high. And then you just absolutely, you know, you were inside having having lunch and having sherry. Um, you know, kind of this kind of you know shaded shaded building and you know shaded space and you know cool space to break from the from the two p.m. sun. Yeah. But as soon as you stepped outside, you then just blinded. Ah, and that's by, what by, the, by the reflections. It's yeah, it's just absolutely brilliant. Wow. It's, it's just you know they were actually. I remember they were handing out these sort of you know straw boaters. Um, as we got off the coach, basically, because it's like if you didn't have sunglasses, which as I, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people did, uh, you were going to be blinded. <laughs> so it was like you need you needed something to shade your <laughs> shade your eyes with because wow. it was just that intense. Wow. But it but it's in, it's incredible. And and I would I would actually li- you know just like to make a bit of a link back to to kind of to the to the last episode and 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 just I think you know where I think I think Sherry. I think it does so many things so well, uh, you know, that we've that we've sort of already already touched on. But I think I think there's there's still, um, you know, there's still an opportunity really to 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 tell that part of the story. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I remember back to when I was you know first sort of curious and reading about um, Sherry. It was almost like the the weight of all of the communication and um, you know everything that was kind of described. It was all a- around. You know the great things that we've been speaking about. You know, it was about how the floor comes in, and it, it was about how wines are fortified, and how they go into barrels, and how they're aged, and how they move around, and th- which is absolutely amazing. But um, I think the part almost before that grape gets harvested, yeah. and before it gets gets snipped, I personally feel that 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 is 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 underrepresented in the in the sherry story mm. um and, and and in this in this sort of spirit of people wanting to know more about where their food is coming from what conditions it's coming from and and, and almost yeah wanting something that's that's a bit special that's unique that's maybe limited edition i think that that, that there is a, a an additional story and up say an opportunity really um for sherry to tell more of that story more of you know what happens in the vineyard what what are the sort of growing conditions and um i think there's i think there's you know potentially some interesting uh moves in that direction that 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 have been sort of 
bubbling under as as I see them for for for, for many years and, and and maybe that these are going to come more to the fore. I totally agree. And I mean just simply you said about, you know, what happens in the vineyard and the, you remember mm. of course your three out of your six the culture, the geographical, the geological. But in terms of geological this Alberissa soils like I mean they're so unique. They should be something. Yeah. The way the fact yeah. that you can't actually you're not allowed to irrigate the rules for the DO is you're not allowed to irrigate. So you have to rely on the water that falls in primarily in the winter and we're talking i think it's about 500 mm-hmm. to 700 millimeters a year it's not a lot at all and they create these stairs mm. into the soils uh, so that they can kind of catch the water so that it will so they don't lose anything nothing runs off and then it will go down in they're very obviously calcium rich soil so of course they're free draining and then they retain the water but just the way that that soil is so different and they treat it so differently because of the water restrictions it's phenomenal and people don't know about it. So yeah, if people can talk passionately about what they're doing in that vineyard and how mm. that affects this, as you said, quite neutral grape, actually, there's, there's definitely stories to be told. 100%. Yeah, for now, I'll just have to drink yeah. the wine. I haven't, got any, I haven't got any stories to contribute. Sorry. <laughs> Lawrence, thank you ever so much. Yeah, no, it's been amazing. I think the other big opportunity, obviously, the Sherry Week is 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 a huge event that to kind of you know takes place every year in November, and you know kind of get, I think gets gets a lot of those stories out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I, you know I, I think it, I think Sherry is you know genuinely a you know it's it's for life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> there you go you hear it here first but guys you're listening to this podcast if you're listening to it when it's just been released you have one month to prepare for sherry wine week and then you can get all crazy and indulge and really i'm sure there'll be lots of stories as lawrence has said coming out and about oh, thank you lawrence you've been amazing amazing we'll do this again sometime thank you so much yeah it's been brilliant bless you all I'll right speak to you soon. virtual chin chin salut oh wait i've got two salut. glasses salut. Now, anyone who wants to continue their sherry journey, you can go across to interpretingwine.com slash sherry. And this is the start of Lawrence's nine part series. So it will start with episode 325. And we didn't get around to talking about the Solera system itself. However, if you go back to one of my old episodes, that's episode 33, Fortified Wines with Master of Wine, Tim Jackson, about five minutes in, I'm talking all about what the Solera system is. And in fact, you'll also hear from him what he thinks is a Palo Cortado. Now, I have a great wine quote for you to finish off today's episode. And it's by Spanish novelist Pedro Antonio de Alcarzón. And he says, On Sherry, the destiny of a thousand generations is concentrated in each drop. If the cares of the world overwhelm you, only taste it, pilgrim and you will swear that heaven is on earth yes well quite clearly pedro antonio was a sherry aficionado (laughs) right that's all for today thanks so much for listening you know what to do subscribe if you haven't share with your wine loving friends and like and leave your comments to prepare you for next week if you thought sherry was a step out of your comfort zone next week i'm chatting with sonal holland who is the only master of wine in india of course the subject is wines of india so i look forward to seeing you again next week until then cheers to you